<laughs> welcome to good morning and welcome to Brentwood Community United Methodist Church. We are glad that you are here, whether you're worshiping with us in person or online or you'll watch us later. We're thankful that you chose to be with us. I'm going to ask everybody to double check your phones and your watches um, like I should right now and make sure they don't ring or ping or alarm so that we can be in a time of worship. And I would ask uh, everyone to stand now for our opening hymn. Come, come, everybody worship. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 5. to worship. God has searched us and knows us. God knows when we sit down and when we rise up. God searches out our path and our laying down. God is acquainted with all our ways. Before a word is on our tongues, God knows it. God's hand is ever available to guide us. Such knowledge is wonderful. <laughs> Such knowledge is a wonder to us. It is beyond anything we can attain. We cannot escape from God's spirit. There is nowhere to flee from God's presence. Darkness is a light to our God. God illuminates the way before us. Amen. Take a few minutes to look at uh, the mission and ministry opportunities here at the church. There's always much going on. Let's see. There are Do we have any other slides up there? I know I can talk about, okay, we've got some upcoming meetings this week. Um, and then moving on into August, you can always check with your chair if you're part of a committee and make sure you know your meeting dates and times and locations. There's a time and talent survey that we're sending out to everyone in our church asking our members and friends to go through and look at it, where your skills and passions can work for our church and how you'd like to use your time and talents. Um, I encourage everyone to fill that out. Fellowship Hour is 
continuing without being totally structured or scheduled for the July and August. We're asking people to just sign up when they can help bring treats and so far people are coming through and <laughs> we, we've in, continued to enjoy our fellowship time. Pastor is starting a six week small group making sense of the Bible. Um, this is a great book by Adam Hamilton. I did this study a couple years ago, I think, when we did Making Sense of the Bible, and it's, it, was, it was very enlightening. I really enjoyed it. I'd encourage people to take the class. Registration by the end of July, not August. Okay, because it starts in August, yes. <laughs> okay, is there anything else? Uh, Sunday Night Live, I was going to talk about that myself. We are hosting another Sunday Night Live all family event. We are going to be having a potluck and talent show. I know we have amazingly talented people here. Musical abilities, singing, but maybe we have kids who could dance for us or tell us jokes or maybe you have a hidden talent you'd wish to share. But we encourage everyone to please come out. Um, sign up will be available in the fellowship hall after service and we'll have, um, just let us know if you're coming, what you think you might bring. And if you wanna share a talent, that would be excellent. We'd love it. Um, go ahead, Tony, you have something? Yeah, just to remind everybody, we do have a Sunday school class every Sunday at nine o'clock. We meet in the uh, youth classroom. Come on in and fellowship with us. Uh, to uh, bring it in with the continuing uh, 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 class lesson from the uh, Methodists. So we'll be talking your language, my language, and the Lord's language. So come on in. Let's fellowship together. Thank you. All right. If there are no other um, announcements, we'll enter into a time of worship. And we are blessed to have uh, Joe and Joy Kick share some music with us today. <laughs> Let it shine. 
let your light shine. Please come forward, everybody. Welcome, young disciples. Okay, listen. Wyatt, hi, Emma. <laughs> How are you? How are you? Good, good, good. Okay. So I want to show you something. <coughs> oh, there are two pictures. One is a honeybee and killer bee. Uh, can you tell, can you say it easily? Can you tell which one is killer bee and honeybee? What? Number two is killer bee. What do you think? Let, let me show you. Uh oh. <laughs> See, it's not easy to tell by just looking, right? What about here? Some flowers are poisonous and so bad. What about foxglove, orchid? Which one is poison? Yes. Which one? Orchid or foxglove? Yes. Let me see. Oops, yes, the, the answer is number one, foxglove, that is very poisonous. But orchid is not poisonous, it's harmless. So it's okay, right, to everybody. So it's not easy to tell, you know, which one is bad, which one is good. What about weed and weed? Number two is what? Wheat? Wheat. Okay, let's see. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Number two is wheat. So it, they look so alike, right? So hard to know. So long time ago, Jesus said, you know, there are wheat and weeds in the field, and people wanted to get rid of all those weeds. But Jesus said, well, you just really cannot tell which one is weed and which one is wheat. Why don't you just let them grow together and later at harvest time an expert, you know, someone who knows best, will come and uh, deal with all these problems. So th they will know which one is wheat and which one is wheat. And Jesus said, that's God, the angels of God, they know, right? Look at these people, so many people in the world. Can you tell who is good, who is not good? By just looking at them, no one, no one knows, right? So let them just, you know, live together. We, we just need to love everybody. Okay, be kind to everybody, but uh, at harvest time, only God knows. Only God can say, wow, you are good, or, well, you did something bad, right? Only God knows. So let's trust God, and let's love our neighbors, our friends, and pray for everybody. Can you do that? Okay, let's pray together. Come here. All right, let's pray. Thank you, God, for teaching us your wisdom. Help us to love everybody. Be kind to everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, let's go to Sunday school.
Please stand as you are able for our Old Testament reading, Genesis, or actually, they don't have to stand, do they? You don't have to stand. I take that back. <laughs> Just kidding. Have a rest. <laughs> our Old Testament reading today is from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar, and he poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel. This is the word of God for all God's people. Be to God. <coughs> uh, this is a song about staying close to Jesus as we go through our daily life. We find some inspiration. I was looking for answers, a pride got 
in my way Cruising down life's highway On another cloudy day Now my soul is searching I long to see your face Bring me to the peaceful valley And to your amazing grace Oh Jesus, take the wheel Going down the road Life is a journey Show me the way to go Your life will guide us Love can help us heal I'm heading home, I've got a ways to go Jesus, take the wheel Thank you, Joe. We've come to the time in our service where we ask God to bless our gifts and show us how we can love and serve others. As the ushers prepare to collect the offering, please pray with me. God of the wilderness, we give you these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give these offerings in hope, knowing that you can use them to spread your love in this world. And with these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and with open hands. Amen.
Let's uh, share our joys and concerns. It's such a great joy to see John here among us, and he's always come back, come back to us. <laughs> so <laughs> wonderful. Um, anybody who want to share your joys or concerns for the prayers, Janet? I have another great niece. Oh. <laughs> wow. Her name's Holly. Holly Jane. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Okay. Oh, Michael Ann. I just wanted to say thank you to those of you who were here and helped me out last week. Hopefully that won't happen again. Uh, I spoke to Joyce Sorensen yesterday and mm -hmm. she sounded terrific. She is feeling good and uh, she sounded really good. Her daughter, Marcia, mm -hmm. is home from the hospital and uh, she is not as well as she was when she first came home. There was a problem with her medications. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Our prayers for Marcia. Um, Katie. We would just like to thank you all for all the prayers that you sent our way uh, during John's illness. Uh, he got a clean bill of health from both surgeons this week, so we are thrilled. Um, also, um, we would like prayers for our daughter-in-law's uh, dad, Brad Thomas, who had the same procedure that John had done two weeks ago, but he had a stroke during the procedure. So please pray for Brad. He's in rehab right now. Brad? Brad? Brad Thomas. Thomas. Okay. And I want to thank Pastor Lee and a group of fellows that went to uh, Kogjur, long term care yesterday. You want to explain more about it, uh, Pastor Lee, about visiting Mel? Yes. Um, Seven people from men's group and CCN, and I uh, visited Mel Strong yesterday at Cozier, and uh, he's been losing um, memories like all of us do. <laughs> but uh, we had a really wonderful time, and he looked so much happier uh, than before. And I mean, we, we had a wonderful time together. Thank you for coming there or with me. <laughs> And he sang songs. He sang songs, yes. He's Yeah, we need to check okay. the fact. <laughs> Go ahead. He said he's moving, selling out, and going to Yosemite to live. So just everybody wanted everybody yes. to know that. Yes. Okay. I have yes. I have a joy that um, this Wednesday I will, we will get to celebrate my mother's 84th birthday. So I'm yeah, thankful for her. Yes, the flowers are from my mom. To her. <laughs> Wonderful. And it's good to have uh, Mike and um, uh, Stephanie uh, back with us. It's been a while. So good to see you. <laughs> okay, and um, all right, let's, let's pray together. Let's take a deep breath, breathing in. God is love, breathe out. Thanks be to God. One more time, breathe in. God loves us, breathe out. Thanks be to God. Our loving God, thank you for being with us always, guiding our thoughts, our hearts, and our feet, our steps, so that we can be there where you wanted us to be and serving you and your people as we see, you see their needs. Oh God, we lift up our people, our loved ones, neighbors and friends who really need your healing grace. Temporary or chronic, 
O God, be with them and bless them with your wonderful health, your great spirit, hope, and strength each day. Help them to walk with you always. Thank you for the gift of a newborn baby and be with her and bless her with lots of wonderful relationships and great blessings in her life. And we pray for those who are struggling with many things in their lives, relationships, financial difficulties, job situations, spiritual struggles, questions and doubts. Oh God, we are so grateful that you always with us, especially when we go through difficult times. Oh God, give us your conviction, your presence, so that we have confidence that you are with us and you lead our ways. Help us to help one another and lift up the little ones among us all the time. We pray for peace in this world and justice for all your people wherever they are. Oh God, be with us so that we can lift up your light everywhere we go and be with us as we worship you. Fill our hearts with your spirit's wonderful touches and nourishment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. All the world. Double checking, you get to stay in your seats. We're going to be singing our hymn of faith is Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling Me. All of our hymns today are ones that people have been requesting and made note of and put out on our tree. And so we're using, we're trying to sing the songs that you've asked for.
Please stand as you are able for our gospel reading. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 30. This is the parable of the weeds among the wheat. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. This is the word of God for all God's people. Uh, do you know how many parables, parables in the Bible, especially in the Gospels? Um, 10 or 20, uh, the total number is 27, and all of them are in uh, three synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. There is no parable in the Gospel according to John because he's been, he uh, focuses on the identity of Jesus Christ and his uh, special relationship with uh, God, his Father. So all of the 27 uh, parables, they are teaching us, uh, letting us know what the kingdom of God what it, it is like, what the kingdom of God is like, and what are the values of the kingdom people. And these teachings offer us core principles for Christian lives. And our founder, founder of the Methodist Church, uh, John Wesley, he came up with this three simple rules for uh, Methodists. Let's all read together. Number one, do no harm. Two, do good. Three, stay in love with God. Yeah, do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God through participating <clears throat> all the spiritual practices, uh, means of graces. Uh, that's what he meant. So come to Bible study. It's coming up. Mine is coming up. But every Sunday morning, you have Bible study. It's a beautiful small group. So please come. Uh, stay in love with God. That's uh, how we can stay in love with God through uh, so many participations in the activities and spiritual practices of the church. <clears throat> so early Methodist uh, church had uh, spread it out and ex expanded in England and North America uh, in 18th and 19th centuries. And in those days, you know, 99 0.5% were lay people. There were no clergy people, you know. The, just pe uh, uh, John Wesley and few clergy uh, trained uh, lay people to be the preacher, to be the leader of uh, cell groups and, you know, band groups. And all the ladies, they went out and started uh, churches and small groups, and that's the Methodist movement. So they needed uh, more simple guidelines. So 
uh, John Wesley came up with this three simple rules. Uh, and um, this became a Methodist guiding principles and uh, it really helped them to grow in spirit and in numbers. So in all those 27 parables, uh, we can find many, many emphasis on do good, the number two rule, do good, do encouraging people to do this and to do that. But uh, today's uh, parable, the wheat and the weeds, this parable emphasizes on the first rule, do no harm. Do no harm. How often do we make mistakes in our lives and do harms? You know, Christians, we, we do that because we just believe so much. We, 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 we know for sure that I'm right and they are wrong. So that's how we do harms. Um, we have to start telling us more. I may be wrong, right? I may be wrong. So that's why we, it is so important to stay, stay in small groups. We talk about it, right? We are confused. It's not clear always. And we often realize that it could have been better if we had waited longer, trusted more in the work of God. So today's parable teaches us just that. Very familiar parable a farmer planted good seeds, but soon his enemy, enemy planted weeds in his field during the night. And the wheat and the weeds uh, grew together. So he asked, the farmer asked the landowner to allow him to take the weeds out quickly, but the landowner forbade it saying, you may accidentally pluck out the wheat. So let both grow side by side. I will send the harvesters, not you. I will send the harvesters to deal with them at harvest time, not now, at harvest time times. So Jesus tells us to accept the reality, the coexistence of the good and the evil in our lives and leave the judgment up to God and let God sort them out in his time. And that's how we can do, do no harm. So Jesus' instruction was very practical because the wheat and the weeds look very much alike as they grow together. So ordinary people cannot distinguish them one from the other. That's why Jesus said to his disciples not to get rid of the weeds themselves. Just leave it to God. There are a lot of times when we don't know which one is what. So that's why God forbade Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve, from taking the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis chapter 2, uh, 16. 
But Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When they ate it, they began to judge one another, judge one another and blame each other. And this fruit really enabled them to judge without knowing what is really good or evil. So only God, only God <clears throat> has the whole picture of the creation. Only God has the whole picture of the creation. Only God has the whole timeline of the creation. We only have pieces. We humans only know what we see, what we experience, and what we understand as far as we can. No one has the whole truth like God does. So do no harm. Leave judgment to God. From the beginning of the Bible, God has been telling us so. One century ago, homosexuality was considered as a form of mental illness, but today no psychological textbook categorizes it as such. Christianity committed many crimes based on the notion of witch hunt and burnt many innocent women when they demonstrated special talents. Premature judgments have destroyed so many innocent lives and still been oppressing so many minority groups. We, we humans have eaten the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and still act as a judge to our neighbors. This way we have done many harms. So we pray God may forgive us our sins. What about Jacob? Was he the good one or the evil one? Jacob, the younger one uh, of Isaac and Rebecca, he was good except when he was not. <laughs> Just like all of us. Our husbands, our wives, they're always, always good until they are not, right? So Jacob did bad whenever he listened to the voice of temptation, greed. He deceived his brother Esau and stole his entitlement as the first son. Jacob used his brother's weakness. His weakness was that Esau loses his mind when he was hungry. Like so many of us, he was hungry after hunting, and Jacob traded Esau's entitlement with a chili soup that he cooked. The Bible didn't say it is a chili cook, chili soup. I think it is chili soup. And he did not stop there. Jacob also deceived his father and stole his blessing. Isaac, uh, he was at his old age and he lost his eyesight and he could not see and Jacob lied to him, saying that he was Esau, 
and asked for a father's special blessing for the first son. Jacob manipulated the desires of others and used them at their weakest moments in order to get what he wanted. Well, sometimes he was good, but he was never 100% good or 100% bad. His heart was like the field where the wheat and the weeds grew together. So the question is, what did God do about this, about him? Did God focus on the weeds and try to fix them first or not? Jacob's story continues. He ran out of his home because his brother Esau tried to kill him. Why not? Esau was so furious and he tried to kill Jacob and he ran to his uh, uncle's house, Laban's house, to survive. Jacob was really bad. He was a manipulator and liar and deceiver, looking more like the weed, not so much like the wheat. However, however, God showed up in his dream. Jacob was sleeping and he saw angels descending and ascending on the stairs up to the heaven. And he heard the voice saying so many blessings for him, many, many great promises for his life. And he was so shocked and so frantically woke up and realized that God was there for him. He knew that he did not deserve such blessings, such grace. He must have rather expected God's scolding voice, right, for being bad, but not such warm, loving embrace. Jacob, he used other people's vulnerability for his advantages. But God overlooked his bad at his most fearful, vulnerable moment. And God rather blessed him. God did not try to get rid of the weeds from Jacob at this moment. He rather fed him, nurtured him with the heavenly bread. God fertilized, nourished Jacob's soul and waited for the harvest time patiently. This is what God did, nurturing the wheat instead of focusing on getting rid of the weed. After that, Jacob worked very hard for 20 years to rebuild his life at his uncle's house. But ironically, he was deceived by his uncle. He tried, Jacob tried to marry Rachel, but Laban, his uncle, tricked him to marry Leah instead. So he had to work more in order to get Mary Rachel. So overall, Jacob suffered a lot from the exploitative relationship with his uncle. So he decided to return home after 20 years. And on the way home, God showed up again and his angel visited Jacob and they wrestled hard with each other all through the night. 
when Jacob did not give up, he was given a new name. His new name was Israel, meaning the one who strives with God. I was thinking, why not the one who is in peace with God, right? His name was Israel, the one who strives with God. Because he was always struggling between the good and evil, the wheat and the weeds. His heart, his field was still growing crops, both the wheat and the weeds were growing together, coexisting always, just like our hearts. So Jacob continued to struggle with the weeds in his life. Irony of his life continued. We know his story. Later, he was deceived, not just by one son, but rather by his 10 sons. They all, all of them, 10 sons, told a lie to their father, Jacob, regarding the disappearance of his beloved son, Joseph. Those older brothers of Joseph sold Joseph as a slave to Egypt, but they told Jacob that he was killed. Jake, Joseph was killed by some animals. What a betrayal. But Jacob remembered a loving God all throughout his life. He remembered a forgiving God who showed up at Bethel, who fed him, who touched him graciously. His God transformed Jacob, the heel grabber, the manipulator, into Israel, the father of 12 tribes of the Israelite. Jacob learned the lesson to trust God, leave everything to God, and do not try to get rid of the weeds in his life prematurely. That's the lesson. And this morning, I came early to my office and around 7.30, I was passing through the narthex and checked the outside through the window because you know, last Sunday, there were lots of graffiti written on the uh, cement area on, in front of the church. And they were not bad words, but uh, they looked very messy. And uh, Steve came and early for the fellowship hour and he wash them away, uh, so thanks to him. So I remember that, I, and I checked outside. And however, this morning I saw a homeless man sleeping on the same, right there, same place, cement area with his cart full of stuff next to him. And he had a blanket and a pillow and a deep sleep. I could have done something about it. I was a little tempted. But he was sleeping deep, and he was sleeping right in front of the stairs, just like Jacob slept right in front of the stairs to heaven in his dream. It hit me. And he was sleeping right there at the bottom of the stairs. 
and the spirit told me to let him sleep, do no harm. And about uh, 30 minutes later, I saw him getting up and leaving. And he looked like he had enough uh, rest. What would be, what would his story be like? I have no idea. Anybody can fall into that situation so easily in this time and days. This man may bounce back someday and visit our church just like any one of us here. So I pray, I prayed that God may help all those who are struggling with financial difficulties here and everywhere. Let us remember to leave all the judgment, premature judgment to God. God is loving God and we can do, do no harm and do good and stay in love with God. That's the way we live as the people of God's kingdom. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Let's have a silent time with our God. Oh, loving God, fill our hearts with trust in you. Always be content with your presence wherever, whatever we go through. Thank you for being with us. That's the best gospel for all of us. In your son's name we pray, amen. Please stand as you're able for our closing hymn, The Summons.
are called to work in God's field, so let us go and do good always. Help us to trust God and leave judgment to you patiently. May we follow three simple rules. Do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God. Love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all always. All the glories are yours. Almighty God, amen. Thank you.